Hey, I'm Kalab, a second year medical student at the Mayo Clinic Alex School of Medicine. In our last embryology episode, we watched the blastocyst arrive at the uterine lining, and once it implanted, our blastocyst's outer shell, named the trophoblast, became two layers, an inner cytotrophoblast and an outer invasive syncytiotrophoblast. Inside, the embryoblast was still just a simple cluster of cells that we called the inner cell mass. So as weeks two through four kick off, that cluster starts to actually organize, and that's what this video will be about. So firstly, the cells of the inner cell mass flatten into a continuous sheet, and so it's not too distracting, I'll emit the cytotrophoblast from here on. This sheet splits into two layers, the epiblast above and the hypoblast below, and together they form the bilaminar or two-layered embryonic disc. From there, two spaces take shape, an amniotic cavity forming over the epiblast and beneath the hypoblast, the primary yolk sac. We talked in our last video about the many functions of the amniotic cavity and amniotic fluid, so if you want a refresher, I'd suggest you go check that video out. Additionally, though it's only temporary, the yolk sac also plays a key role in those first days of nourishment, and it's a little throwback to our evolutionary past. Then comes week three, and that's when things really begin to get spicy. Through gastrulation, this flat two-layer disc transforms into three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So why would we dedicate an entire episode to this process? Well, because these layers are the source of every tissue in the human body. Again, we're going to do some cropping to focus on the disc, but remember, the yolk sac and the amniotic sac are still there. Okay, cool. So, the first sign of gastrulation is a primitive streak. It's a groove running from head to tail on the epiblast, and note that that's actually the first time I said head or tail because we're finally defining our body's first axis. Epiblast cells stream inward here, pushing aside the hypoblast to form the definitive endoderm. Others ingress through the primitive streak to form the mesoderm, and those that remain at the surface become the ectoderm. The displaced hypoblast cells don't vanish, and they actually go on to line our aforementioned yolk sac. So within the mesoderm, a rod-like structure called the notochord extends from this tiny point called the primitive node. The notochord itself won't become part of the skeleton, but it acts as a signaling line. It directs the overlying ectoderm to thicken into the neural plate, initiating neurulation, the process that ultimately builds the brain and spinal cord. And most of the notochord actually regresses during development, but its remnants live on as nucleus pulposus at the center of our intervertebral discs. So around day 18, the neural plate begins folding inward. It forms a neural groove bordered by raised folds. And over the next few days, these folds rise, converge, and fuse into the neural tube. At the same time, special cells at the crest of each fold break free and migrate, and these are the neural crest cells. Well, let me emphasize, these are really important. They'll form peripheral nerves, parts of the heart, facial cartilage, pigment cells, and much, much, much more. We'll see them time and again throughout this series, but I just want to kind of emphasize that this is where they come from. Meanwhile, the mesoderm cells are also branching into their own distinct regions. Closest to the notochord lies the paraaxial mesoderm, paraaxial right along the axis, and it'll segment into somites. Just beyond it, the intermediate mesoderm gives rise to parts of the urogenital system, and at the far edges, the lateral plate mesoderm spreads to help form the heart, limbs, and body wall. Don't worry so much about memorizing these right now, since we'll double back over many of these processes in subsequent videos. Hi there, so future Kalob here. Um, my original plan was to dive straight into the somites over here and start talking about them, but I realized that we were seeing some pretty big changes in the overall shape of the embryo, and so as to like try to not confuse you guys, I wanted to kind of break that down a little bit. Um, so over here, you know, we can see that the overlying ectoderm is now cyan, and we're going to call that the neural plate ectoderm we just talked a little bit about that earlier also as much as i love you guys my computer can't handle um you know this cellular animation for too long so we're switching to a more volumetric animation but overall when you first look at this thing you might be like wow there's a bunch of stuff that's going on here and uh, a lot of it we're going to talk about in future videos and i don't want to stress you out but it's just kind of naming as far as things go so that same ectoderm is now called the epidermal ectoderm 
The mesoderm is still just the mesoderm and we'll be focusing in on the paraxial mesoderm, which gives rise to the somites. The endoderm is starting to take on more defined roles like the alimentary canal, which is kind of like, you know, your food track. And uh, that notochord has flattened out into the notochordal plate. So overall, it's still the same embryo, but we've just moved a couple days forward in development time. And I just don't want you guys to be confused. I know a lot of this is a bunch of new information that's hitting you all at once. But if we take it piece by piece and right now just focus on the somites, then I promise we'll get through it. All right. With that, future call about. Good luck, Pascal. Thanks, future call. Unfortunately, somites don't all appear at the same time. Some are already differentiating while others are just starting to form. That means there isn't a single stage of the embryo where we can picture all of them at the same time. But still, by the end of week three, the very first somite pairs show up in the neck region, and over the next week, new pairs form one after another in a precise sequence down the length of the body. There are four occipital, eight cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and 8 to 10 coccygeal somites. Somites aren't just structural blocks though, they're segmental guides. They mark out the body plan and direct spinal nerves to their future targets. Later, each somite splits into three parts, a dermatome for the future dermis, a myotome for skeletal muscles, and a sclerotome for vertebrae and ribs. And by week 4, another transformation is already underway too. The embryo folds in three dimensions, head to tail, as well as side to side, reshaping the flat disc into a cylindrical body form. These folds draw the germ layers into position. The endoderm folds inward to form the primitive gut tube. The lateral plate mesoderm stretches and curves into the first outlines of the body cavities, and these will eventually house the heart, lungs, and abdominal organs. So weeks three and four are all about putting the plan in motion. Gastrulation lays down the blueprint. Neurulation begins wiring the control systems for a nervous system. The somites are setting the construction zones and it all has to go perfect down to a T. You can imagine why even small errors at this stage can lead to major consequences from neural tube defects to misplaced organs. In our next episode, we'll watch these germ layers come to life. The first functional organ systems will start to take shape. And I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.